All right, it's my pleasure right now to be joined by the quarterback of the 2003 National Champions, a great American, Matt Mock. Matt, how you doing, man? Uh, doing great. Always good talking to you. Great talking to you, man. Um, it's been a, been a tough year, been a lot of, um, you know, rough feelings around here. Uh, Coach O won't be back uh, next year for the LSU Tigers. Just uh, your reaction here in the news. Uh, you know, disappointed, sad, um, just because I'm a big Coach O fan and, and really like him um, as a person and, and what he did uh, for uh, all the former players at LSU. Um, but uh, kind of understand, uh, unfortunately, in the SEC, it's uh, it's tough. <laughs> you know, it's uh, I think Dan Mullen said it. He, you know, it's it's you know, you lose a couple games and you're on the hot seat, and then, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy, no matter how much success you had one year ago, two years ago, uh, people spend a lot of money and, uh, and uh, are extremely passionate, which is a great thing, but uh, also um, brings in some, some big expectations with that. Yeah, uh, you mentioned it, uh, how Coach O was great to the former players. Um, you, you told me that uh, Les Miles was always good to you, treated you well. But certainly when Ed Ogeron took over, it seemed like a lot of the former players were coming back and being more a part of the program. Without a doubt. I mean, without, I can't tell you the number of guys that, um, not that they didn't feel welcome. I think LSU's always done a great job of, of taking care of, you know, the former players. But I think more so than any other time, um, they, they just, you know, felt appreciated um, for the contributions that they made. Matt, it's unusual uh, for a coach to be let go, um, know he's not coming back next year, and that he still will coach five games moving forward and a bowl game. He said if LSU reaches a bowl, he'll coach that. Um, what are your thoughts on that dynamic moving forward? I think we're lucky it's Coach O, because I, I think he loves LSU and would do anything um, for this university. Um, and so I, there's no part of me that – thinks he'll back down on recruiting or doing whatever it takes to, to help LSU. Cause I think even when he's gone, he still wants LSU um, to, to be successful. Um, so I think as a former Tiger and as an LSU fan, um, extremely grateful that, that he's the guy that's, that's, you know, in that position because, because I think he's still going to work his tail off um, to, to do things the right way. Now, the teams Matt Moth played on, he, he was never on a team where the coach was in danger of getting fired or, you know, two <laughs> SEC champions, a national champion. Um, and, uh, typically, Matt, when a coaching change is made in the middle of the year, you got an interim guy who brings a lot of energy. Hey, we're going to do things different. We're going to light a new fire. It seems like right now with LSU, they're all saying things are the same. We, we're not changing anything. It doesn't feel any different. It's just... Coach O was an interim coach again, so to speak. He just doesn't, he knows he's not coming back next year. So I'm just curious how the players will, will deal with it moving forward too. Uh, you know, again, I think it's, uh, he's a unique personality. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the one thing he does really, really, really well is motivate um, and, and to get guys ready to go. So, uh, you know, I, I think again, you know, this, this isn't, you know, um, Division three football. I mean, this is, you're on national TV. You are uh, you, a chance to get to the NFL. It's just players have, you know, more motivation than, uh, than who's my coach right now. Um, and so I, I don't think that there'll be, a, I don't think the product in the field um, will, will, will change. And I think LSU was headed in the right direction um, when, when this happened. And I, I hope to continue to see that. Do you have any um, – did you, did you know Mel Tucker at LSU or was that right before you? No, he, he was there. Uh, he was either the DB coach or the uh, uh, defensive quality control guy. Or it, he was on the staff. I can't remember what his um, role was. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I know, I know Mel. And he was actually – I'm in Colorado. He was at um, CU um, for what was a year or two um, doing that. Now, we're going back a ways, 21 years and whatnot, uh, when he coached there with Nick Saban at LSU, and he's now the head coach at Michigan State, and, we'll, and his name is being brought up as being a possible replacement. Um, just just throwing a big uh, net out to you there, uh, Matt. Do you have any thoughts on replacements and coaches that are out there and whatnot? 
Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big uh, Billy Napier fan at UL, just right down the road. I, I think he would be, um, in my opinion, a, an absolutely perfect fit. Um, uh, very impressed. I, I think for me, a head coach, it's, it's beneficial to be an X's and O's guy. And I think he's an excellent offensive mind. He's uh, been a coordinator at a lot of really good schools. But I think more than anything, um, it, just because I was around Nick Saban for a long period of time, uh, a coach that is organized and detail oriented and focused on not just the next day, the next hour, the next minute <laughs> is, uh, is something that is extremely uh, impressive. And I think that that's who he is. Um, so, and I think this would be a, a, a dream job for him. Um, and I think he knows Louisiana already has ties here. Um, so if you're, if you're just asking me who my, you know, First pick would be obviously I've never interviewed him and and I you know Scott Woodward is a, a one of my closest friends and I know uh, LSU fans should be extremely happy about uh, the guy who's going to hire the next coach because uh, when I talk about detail oriented Scott Woodward's detail oriented and he will go through uh, every you know possible scenario uh, to to make sure that uh, that LSU gets the right guy um, but yeah, if you just off the top of my head I, I to me I I don't think we don't have to go very far to find what I would think would be a, a perfect fit for our next coach. Well said. And I, I'm a huge Billy Napier fan too. I grew up in the lat I grew up in Lafayette. And as people know, I went to the school when it was called USL raging Cajuns and to the thought of the raging Cajuns being ranked in the top 25 was just not uh, on anybody's yeah. thought process then at least. Three ten win seasons. I mean, it's just it's it's very impressive uh, what he's done. And I think and I think part of part of the issue uh, in in Louisiana is if you just close the borders, you've got a top ten recruiting class every single year. Um, but I think you know if you talk to Nick Saban, he's had trouble uh, you know getting in uh, with those college or those high school coaches, and and he finally was able to do it with Michael Clayton and Marcus Spears. Um, and, and really changed uh, LSU mm -hmm. football forever. I mean, since that point, um, because we've done an excellent job um, since getting those two guys of recruiting in state. And I think for, for uh, Bill and Napier already having those, those connections, uh, it just makes it a, a seamless transition. I think he's a winner. And um, there is what some people would say, petty talk, Matt, about, we're LSU. We don't hire the head coach of the Raging Cajuns down the road, you know. But then, if you think well, that all, way, Matt, all, all of, uh, I mean, there was there was about five schools last year that would have done it in a heartbeat. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I think I agree we're LSU. But I mean, to me, I think Billy Napier's a guy that that we don't have to worry about someone trying to leave in three, four years, or the next best offer. I think he looks at it as, hey, this is a job I'd want to be at for for 20 years. Um, and, uh, so I, I think we, that, that's, um, that's an, an old school mentality. And, and I think that, um, for me, uh, I care about LSU and, and I, I want someone to, that wants to be there. And I think we just had coach O would have never left LSU. You know what I mean? He was, right. he would have been here for as long as we would have, would have kept him. And I, and I think that's, that's important. Um, and so, yeah. Part of the reason why I think that that would be uh, would be my choice. Yeah. You don't want to see B Billy Napier down the line at a big school winning big and, and thinking to yourself, we didn't hire him because he was the coach of the Raging Cajuns and we were being. I think no, matter, no matter where he's at, he's going to be successful. I really do. I, I truly again, pe people that are that focused and that detail oriented. there was a, an awesome article on um, ESPN just uh, talking about um, what it's like and uh and how he, there's, you know, he coached under Nick for, uh, you know, several years. And in the article, I'm re reading it, thinking to myself, this is like four or five things that Nick does uh, that, that he's kind of implemented, um, but made it his own, you know, a little bit too. Um, so I, I think he's, you know, has all those detailed things, but he's also a guy that uh, that's relatable and, and um, yeah. maybe, maybe a little more personable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, very young, 42 uh, years old. And also, um, you know, somebody told me uh, the last two LSU coaches have been 
you know, they've been personalities. Uh, somebody even said cartoonish. And, and that's why they would not want Lane Kiffin or maybe somebody of that um, cut. And, and Napier, although friendly, seems like he's really kind of locked in on what he's doing. And uh, he's not going to do any um, off the field shenanigans or, um, you, know, you, you know what I'm getting at. Oh, without a doubt. I, I say this all the time. The head coach of a major college program is a CEO. Um, I mean, they're a coach, but um, most CEOs, you don't hear from a lot. Uh, and that's a good thing. <laughs> and, right. and basically, uh, th their job is, is to keep, you know, train on the tracks and, uh, and to keep things, uh, things rolling in the right direction. Um, it's uh, Lane, Lane Kiffin is more about Lane Kiffin. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's more about Urban Meyer. Um, you know, some of these names I've heard, I just, in my, and that's my personal opinion, but um, to me, LSU is bigger than who, who the coach is. Um, and, and, and that's how it should be. And you made the point a while ago about how he turned down some, some big jobs. Big jobs. That was, that was another thing growing up, Matt, thinking that the head coach of the Raging Cajuns would turn down Auburn or South Carolina or something. Well, but, uh, but I think to the point of when I tell detail learning, he knows what he wants and he's focused on realizing that, you know, a lot of uh, Adam Gase, all right, perfect example, good buddy of mine, great coach, but probably wasn't ready to be a head coach yet. Uh, and, and I think he would probably tell you that. Uh, Billy or Napier had the foresight to say, hey, you know what? I don't want any job. I want the right job um, right. because I want to be successful. And Cal, what I'm thinking, Matt, is maybe he's been tipped off in advance. He knew this was coming, and uh, and this is the job he's waiting on. Who knows? I, I, I'm not sure. Some people in Alabama think that someday down the line he could replace uh, Nick Saban, although Dabo Sweeney is always kind of linked to that job. But uh, and I always, I mean, to me, I just, I don't, I, you know, to me, LSU, uh, I know I remember Pete Jenkins. I don't know if you remember Pete. He was Oh, yeah. He, he told me he'd been – he coached everywhere, NFL, college, everywhere. He goes – he said, Matt, he goes, I'm telling you, LSU is the best job in the country. He's, and he said the reason is college is all about recruiting. And he said, when you're at Alabama uh, in Georgia, he goes, yeah, you've got plenty of in-state talent, but there's too many people that are two hours away, you know, that can, can steal from you. In Louisiana, kids grow up wanting to go to LSU. They want to be a Tiger. And it just makes it makes the recruiting portion of it so much easier um, if you know how to form those relationships. Which brings up Jimbo Fisher and a guy you know very well, played yeah. for him, coached you. Um, a lot of people think the, that the, the ship has kind of sailed on Jimbo. Maybe he's settling into A&M and he's getting this thing up and running. He lost a couple of games early, but he beat Alabama. So as you and I are talking, he's back on the uptick there. But um, would, he come to, would he come to Louisiana where he doesn't compete with Texas and other schools for, for talent? And uh, what, what do you think about that possibility, especially since Scott Woodward hired him at A&M as well? Well, I mean, I'm a huge Jimbo fan. I think he's, you know, when I say Billy Napier is only because, to me, I, I don't know, uh, not because Jimbo doesn't love LSU, but that's a big contract. Uh, yes. Really big contract. And I know Ed, or Coach O was making more per year, but I think he has 10 years, like 80. I mean, just the guarantee is unbelievable um, that that's still part of that. Now, I know we don't know him money if he if he leaves and things like that. That's That's a friendly portion of it, but – we'd have to incentivize him more than what he's getting currently. And, uh, and just like I, I said earlier, to me, a head coach is extremely important, but the program's more important than, than the head coach. Um, and I, I think that as much as I would love Jimbo, I, I just don't know how that financially uh, works out. Yeah. And, and does a guy want to burn bridges and know he's got to play the school that he just left every year. You know, I mean, I know it's business, but still you're taking on a lot there when you uh, kind of alienate millions of people. Right. Well, and, and I think, I mean, you look at it and you say, you know, for, for Billy Napier, LSU is a better job. Um, I think LSU is a better job than Texas A&M, but how much better? I, you know, what I, mean? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. And he's got that program kind of headed in the right direction. And, and anytime a, a coach moves, it's a lot of work. 
um, you know, yep. to, to kind of even even with Jimbo's history here and knowing a lot of the the people, it's still a ton of work um, to kind of go into that. It, it it seems like if they went the Billy Napier route, it would be clean. It would be something they could do relatively quickly without getting in the dance. Uh, is Jimmy Sexton Napier's agent? I don't even know who uh, Napier's agent is, but anytime he's Jimmy Sexton, I think. Okay. All right. Well. I was trying to eliminate Jimmy Sexton from the <laughs> from the equation. When, when you're talking about college coaches, it's hard to eliminate him. He's got pretty much everybody. <laughs> Can somebody sue him for a monopoly, Matt? I mean, really. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, hey, no, no hating on you, Jimmy. I mean, you know, you uh, he does a good job. No doubt, no doubt. But um, but it, it would seem like that would be a lot easier in, instead of going back and forth with Jimbo again, and they've done that already. Um, but uh, and, and all and you talked about Lane Kiffin. I, I just I think he would score a lot of points, and I think they would win. But can't maybe can't do that. Uh, that not, that's not what Scott Wilbur is looking for. I, I, I mean, there's no one's got the way I do. I I, I would I would be very shocked. Um, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the choice uh, to me, and that, that's a compliment to Scott, uh, not uh, from a bad perspective. I think um, you know the good news is Scott was. Scott was here before Nick Saban was Nick Saban, um, and, and got to see uh, what what it takes and uh, and and his evolution as a coach to becoming arguably, or maybe not even an argument anymore, but the greatest college coach uh, uh, ever. Um, and so yeah. Yeah, I think he knows he knows what he's looking for. Yeah, and not to keep banging the Napier drum, but as you're talking, it's triggering things in my head that he was here 20 years ago when they hired Nick Saban, and I could totally see Scott Woodward stepping to a podium and saying. When we hired Nick Saban 21 years ago, we saw this, this, this. Billy Napier is on the same trajectory. Could be the same. Uh... I, I would say Billy Napier is on a higher trajectory. Uh, Nick Saban, uh, his, if you look at his record at Michigan State, I mean, he was seven and five, eight and whatever. I mean, his best year was his last year. He went nine and two his last year. But yeah, yeah you're right. I mean, he was headed in the right direction. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think people forget uh, when Nick Saban was hired, it wasn't this you know yes we got who we wanted it was Jared Leonardo and him there was kind of like eh, well you know uh with their college record yeah, he's not gonna be able to recruit down here he doesn't know what the SEC is all about uh <laughs> so I think sometimes you gotta look outside the box yeah I think when they hired Nick Saban he was 49 and when he won the national title with you he was 52 yep. and so Napier at this present time is 42 so you're right he, he's uh he seems to be more more ahead at this point um uh, Matt, uh, LSU's got a new, uh, their first ever African-American president. So there's been a lot of talk about uh, him wanting or at least giving a hard look to African-American candidates. You talked about Mel Tucker a little bit. James Franklin is another guy where it seems to be the scuttlebutt is he's going to go to USC. Um, but as we've talked about, any guy who wins nine games at Vanderbilt, uh, that isn't a minor miracle. That is a major miracle to do that twice. Um, but a lot of people think he's going to USC. So, uh, any thoughts on that? I, I don't. I don't know why he'd leave Penn State, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like a, a pretty special place. Uh, you know, doesn't have the glitz and glamour of uh, being in Los Angeles. But uh, I mean, yeah. to me, you leave Penn State for USC. I don't. I don't know if that's. I don't yeah. even think that's a lateral move. I think that's a, a, a downgrade. Yeah. Um, from from my perspective, but. Um, I do know it's a little, uh, from a um, skill player uh, situation, USC is a little bit easier to recruit than, than Penn State. Um, so, uh, again, I, I think, um, I, I li and I like Mel Tucker. I'm not saying if we got, if Mel Tucker was the next coach, I wouldn't sit here and say, oh, man, that was a, a, a poor move. Um, I, I just, you know, kind of what I was talking about, Mel Tucker was at CU for a year uh, and left for Michigan State, which, I, you know, you never know the the details on that, but to me, I just I want it's, it's not to... a very big resume. He just hasn't been a head coach very long. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then just real quick, just just for fun conversation, they always say Scott Woodward's a big game hunter. You know, he likes to hunt, and then when he goes for coaches, it's the same. Uh, a Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, um, and some people say, hey, what, does, does he give Dabo nine ten million? Uh, personally, I don't think Dabo's shtick his personality uh, i don't think that plays in baton rouge and i don't know why you know when you're in the acc and he's only got maybe two tough games a year that does he put himself in the pressure cooker of the sec anyway so just a couple of uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I you know, again, I, I, you know, I just want to win like everybody else does. Um, yeah. But I, but to me, it's not not just about um, winning one year, two years. I want to, I want to program. You know, I mm-hmm. want, and I think that's what I went through is what Nick Saban created was a system. Uh, a uh, every, players knew what to expect that it was going to be the same thing every single year. Uh, and we weren't just looking for a five-star recruit. We're looking for a five-star recruit that was, you go talk to every high school uh, teammate that would all say the same thing. Oh man, great guy. Yeah. He was, he was, yeah, he was fantastic. He's a good person um, type of thing. And I think that's, that's what Nick Saban was able to do is, is not just recruit good players, but, uh, but good people. And, um, and, and I, and I think, LSU has continued that even with Nick Saban being gone uh, we've still been able to, to do that um, so I just hope whoever comes in we, we continue that yeah not to be critical of coach O, but but the last two years are, are what you were looking to avoid you know you want okay. your you want your dips to be nine and three ten and two you don't want to lose five games in a year and and right now we're LSU's already had three losses where they got to go to Ole Miss, go to Alabama, play some other tough teams down the road. So. Well, and I look at it, it's even a team like uh, like Iowa. Uh, Ferentz has been there forever. Uh, Ferentz would argue that's it. Um, and, yeah. and not that we're Iowa, we're way above that. But my point being is sometimes I think that um, as long as a team is uh, is showing the the, the right things, uh, you might lose a couple games, close games, and you win nine nine games or something like that. Uh, but as long as you have the chance uh, to be in the conversation of the, uh, the national championship is the important part. I think the last couple of years, we've just, uh, teams just haven't looked like LSU teams, you know? Um, and I think Coach O would say that. We, we don't give up 50 points to people, you know? We just shouldn't. Um, yeah. and, and unfortunately, that's kind of what we, we've been seeing. Yeah, and and – When's the last time LSU was a back-to-back double-digit underdog in a game? Like, you yeah. know, they were at, at home, uh, 11 points, I think it was. Now, they beat Florida. Now, this week, I think they're back to 9 or 10 at, at Ole Miss, underdog again. So, yeah. uh, shows you the perception, too. Um, a couple more things with you. Uh, you you've always been uh, high on Max Johnson. Um, Max uh, is a product of the offense, and maybe Max on the offense at points this year regressed. But we saw in the Florida game, if you've got a Justin Vincent to turn around and hand the ball to and kind of push those guys back a little bit, the game Tyreen Davis-Price had, uh, Max didn't have to do a ton, but he was very economical throwing three touchdowns to, to Jare Jenkins, a fantastic uh, 360 at the goal line, uh, hits uh, Jenkins for a fourth down touchdown. Just your thoughts on the way Max has played. I thought he's done great. Uh, I really do. Um, I, I think I – think- uh, I've said this numerous times that uh, you can't ask a, a young quarterback um, to, to carry the team on their shoulders in the SEC. You just can't. Um, and the thing I was disappointed with up until this Florida game was not, not only our inability to run, but not even trying to run. You know I mean, it was, it, we didn't even attempt a lot of times, you know? Um, and that was the part that was disappointing for me um, is you might have a couple three and outs, but you, running the football isn't just – Oh man, if we don't get 10 yards on this carry, now we stop doing it. No, you, you know, you've got to, you got to kind of pound it a little bit. And uh, what's wrong with three yards, three yards, and then, you know, picking it up on the on uh, third and short. Uh, unfortunately, I think we, we've first down negative running play. And now we try to pass it two times and uh, it doesn't work out. So I think they've, they've asked a lot of a kid that hasn't played a ton. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, hopefully if we can, uh, we don't have to rush for 280 yards, uh, but uh, if we can we can rush for 85, 90, 100. That's that that's a good balance, and will help him out tremendously. Yeah, in the Auburn game, I think they called 14, 15 pass plays in a row in the fourth quarter, and I mean passes are getting you know deflected up in the air. It, it, it's just real chaotic. You're putting the ball at risk a lot um, when that happens. So yeah, yeah, um, I, exactly what you're talking about there. Yeah. So, uh, but I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, all right. So greatest hits, um, Matt Mock's greatest hits. Okay. LSU is I'm sitting here, they're playing Ole Miss this week. So uh, Matt Mock and the LSU Tigers go to Ole Miss in 2003. I don't know if Ole Miss has had a bigger game since that game. I don't think so. Um, 
It was Eli's last home game, you know. Uh, the stadium is packed. Nick Saban uh, more than once said, I've never got so many one finger salutes in my life as when he went to Ole Miss. And you told me you looked out the window and you saw somebody who also uh, gave you that r- response. <laughs> a four year old. Yeah. <laughs> A four-year-old shot Matt Monk the bird in Oxford, Mississippi in 2003. And, and they shouldn't have done that to me. I, I threw a pick six first play of the game. They should have been they should have been super happy. I was trying to help them out. Like <laughs> yeah, I was I did an interview with Jack Hunt the other day. And Jack Jack was giving you a hard time, man. Hey, he puts us down seven nothing, you know, in the in the game or whatever. But uh, he he was kidding. But uh, well, see, coach, yeah. coach always talked about adversity that you got to overcome adversity. So I was just trying. I just wanted to get out where we felt that adversity and see how we responded, you know? Yeah. Jumping out seven, nothing. That's boring. We don't want that. We need, we need to build some more drama here. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, you hit um, in that game, you throw a, a touchdown pass to the great Devery Henderson. One of my favorites, uh, just a, just blazing speed with Devery, huh? That was his thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was very fortunate uh, to have uh, Mike Clayton and, and Devery. Those are, and, and I think the, I can't tell you how many nights at seven o'clock call them up. Hey, let's go run, throw some routes. And we go to the indoor uh, and, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of just throwing uh, two, three nights a week. And I, and I think that that makes a difference, man. I mean, when, when you're on the same page as your quarterback. And so I, I was extremely appreciative of those guys. Um, I always say it's kind of, kind of like your dad that never says no to you when you ask him to go throw the, those guys never said no to me. So that was good. You were a tad older than than them at the time, I think. I, I was, yeah. I was about uh, that time. I was probably twenty three, I guess, um, and they were yeah. each whatever eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, I, I joked when I first started Channel Nine. I was basically I was basically the same age as the players. So, uh, <laughs> so but um, and Michael Clayton too. Uh, the physicality he had. I mean, he got hammered on some of those catches. Uh, well, and you you should watch a Michael Clayton uh, blocking highlight reel. Um, I mean, that guy, it was unbelievable um, how physical he was um, and, and just his ability to block downfield was, was unbelievable. Yeah, I say he got hammered. He hammered his share of, uh, of people, too. Uh, and not to get too far in the weeds, but that 2002 Cotton Bowl, LSU was so down on defensive backs, they, they put him in at safety. And yeah. I think he played 20, 20 plays that day and hit some people. Yeah, so. no, without a doubt. Well, he was uh, – what was his high school Christian or Christian life? Yeah. Christian life. Yeah. I mean, he was it, it, his high school highlight uh, reel of him playing safety was pretty impressive too. And Stefan LaForce, his uh, quarterback is now the head coach at Parkview Baptist had a nice, uh, had a nice career. All right. So in, in Ole Miss, if you go there today, Matt Maul, and you look up, they've got uh, a banner that says 2003 SEC West champs at, at, at Ole Miss, which has been discussed by Justin Vincent. And others. Uh, now, I think LSU, if you go to the indoor, they've got some SEC West championship banners up where they tied for the title and didn't go to the SEC championship game. But uh, I'm being petty right now. But any thoughts on that banner that hangs at Ole Miss? I think they were the co-champs that year uh, is what it was. I think that was basically it came down to that game of who was going to go. But mm-hmm. both teams had the same number because uh, that's their first loss, I think, um, in the West. So. I think that maybe you could spray paint a CO on there before that. Awesome. <laughs> I do remember the SEC championship game that year in Atlanta and LSU was there and beat Tennessee uh, or, or no beat Georgia. I'm sorry. Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Tennessee was 2001 when the great Matt Malt came in. Uh, we're in October baseball right now. You were the great relief pitcher that day came in. Yeah, that was probably, that's still probably my favorite game of uh, any at, at LSU. It was just, uh, it just, it felt like, LSU football change uh, after that game a little bit. So it was good. There's a, um, a mechanic, a car uh, repair place that I go to, and they have different um, advocate, uh, the newspaper, um, front pages uh, framed and hung up. And every time I go to that, I get my oil changed or whatever, there's a picture of Matt Malk being lifted up by his teammates with his hand in the air for that SEC championship game. I, I can't think of the headline off the top of my hand. So sweet or how sweet it is or, or something that you were on your way to the Sugar Bowl and, and, and shocked uh, Tennessee that night. Yep, it was awesome. All right, buddy. Well, look, the great Matt Mock. Thanks for joining me, man. And uh, always enjoy your insight. And uh, only four national champions in the history of LSU who, uh, you know, uh, Warren Rabb, 
Matt Mock, Matt Flynn, and Joe Burrow. There you are. Yep. Very appreciative of my time there. And uh, and I think uh, LSU fans uh, should have uh, the utmost confidence in, uh, in Scott. And he'll, he'll do a great job finding us a great head coach. All right, Matt. Matt Mock, thanks so much for being with me today. All right. Thanks a lot.